Hello everyone. I made a video recently on a battery backup system that I've been working on. Uh, it's not intended to be an off-grid system. I just need basically a constant 24 volt nominal power supply. So essentially like a UPS but DC. I don't need any AC conversion. So this is going to be in a somewhat remote location in a power cabinet that we're building. Um, so I've been doing that and experimenting around with uh, a lot of different kinds of things. And uh, if you'll recall from my previous video, it was not a huge success. The device I bought off eBay did not work uh, as expected. It's really designed to be a solar charger, and I don't intend to run the system off uh, solar at all. It has very stable electricity. Just if the power goes out, there is no backup at all, and it's down. So I only really need you know, maybe a couple hours of battery power. Um, power doesn't really go out that often, but it needs to be... Uh, stable to this device. So, back to the drawing board. Uh, I went and I ordered some new equipment and we're going to be putting that together today and see if we can't get a stable 24 volt uh, DC power system. Alright, so this is the box uh, as I got it. Uh, it just came in like a bubble mailer kind of thing and uh, it took about five weeks from when I ordered it to get it. You know, that happens sometimes, I guess. Um, you order things from China. Uh, this is, says it's a power supply, 27 volts at four amps, which is perfect for charging my batteries. Um, so most of these power supplies are not going to work for this application because they will put out 24 volts. 24 volts does not charge batteries. It does less than the battery voltage. It'll actually discharge batteries if you uh, tie them to a 24 volt power supply. Uh, but this one puts up 27 volts at 4 amps. It's actually designed to do uh, what I'm trying to do here. And they call this uh, a UPS. Uh, for you who don't know, a UPS is uninterruptible or uninterrupted power supply. So this does not put out AC power, it puts out DC power. It's exactly what I need all in one box. So we're going to uh, see what it comes with here. Hopefully it comes with more instructions than the last one did, or at least some specs. So, uh, uh, I've got a couple of leads here. Uh, only two interesting. We need a third in order to connect up batteries, but it's all right. We're going to make our own anyway. All right. Let's see if I can get this out of this box with one hand. I didn't bring my camera mount today to work. All right, so we've got, uh, it's pretty cool, we've got uh, neutral line ground labeled correctly, uh, a fuse in line, look at that, just a little standard glass window fuse there, it's not too bad too. Uh, our battery looks like it hooks up here, and our sortie, um, I have no idea what a sortie is, I would assume this is supposed to say load, because that's the only thing missing. Um, yeah, not helpful. I have no idea. I've never heard of sortie. If you've heard of sortie before, I would love to know uh, who uses that. And also why we have a plus minus and a common, unless this is like a chassis ground. I don't know what that C is for. Um, this came with uh, zero instructions. I looked on the website that it came with. It didn't really have much more information than this. Um, except for the fact that it's a PWM, it does put out a full 4 amps, 27 volts. Hmm. Well, um, I guess we'll have to do a little experimenting to see what our sortie is here and uh, how we're going to wire this in. I right, got that, and now these lugs. Uh, these you can just clamp on, but I choose to solder them on because they fall off if you clamp them on. So I'm going to remove these. The insulators. We're going to put key shrink tubing on it anyway to keep it from shorting out. Um, so I'm going to remove the insulators and then get these prepped. Uh, this is already pulled back and I'm going to strip them back uh, the right amount, which is about a quarter of an inch. And so this isn't hard. Uh, once it's about stripped this far back, uh, we're just going to put it in the hole one-handed. In the hole, it should stick out just a hair on the other side. Don't want to go too far. Let's see if I can get closer. See that's sticking out just a hair. 
That's exactly right. I'm going to crimp this down so that it'll stay while I solder it, but then we're going to actually solder it to make sure that it stays forever. And it should look like that. That one over first, right over the wire, it's holding on, and then the other one over that. And these connectors are designed for a higher gauge wire. This is a 20 gauge wire, and I think these connectors only go down to 16. They're like 16 to 18 or something like that. Um, but the red connectors, they don't make, well, at least I don't have one that has um, the wide enough plug. I think it's called a quarter inch spade or something like that. They don't have the wide enough connector to fit on the battery lugs. They make a narrower version, but mine have some reds. They just don't quite fit on the battery. So I use these blue ones and they fit every time. I've got both of these prepped. I'm going to solder them on there. This would work like this. It is mechanically solid. It is electrically solid. Um, over time you'll get corrosion inside of here. This is not copper. This is tin wire so um, it won't but you'll get corrosion inside of there and you also don't have a perfect connection because there are there are voids. So you'll get a lot more power output if you solder it than if you just crimp it like this. I've done a couple other videos before on how to solder um, you don't actually want to heat the area, you want to heat around it. See I'm melting the jacket, actually it's getting too hot. You don't want, you want the device you're soldering itself to melt the solder, not the iron. The iron is just to apply the heat. If you're melting the solder with this, you're going to get a cold joint and it's not going to, it's not going to hold. Alright, so quarter inch heat shrink tubing is the right size to use for this. I just cut off uh, about a one inch length. I pull it over my connector a little bit like that because it'll shrink back. Um, I'm just hanging out a little. Just pull back in there. And I'm just going to apply moderate heat with my trusty heat gun. Uh, this thing goes really, really, really hot, and uh, I only need it to be very mildly hot. So we're going to run it on extremely low. It only takes a few seconds. So now this lead is going to go directly into my power supply unit. Came with these nice little leads, so I'm probably going to end up reusing one of these uh, to jumper my two batteries to give me 24 volts. Now uh, this is unfused. They did fuse the input, but they did not fuse the battery. You always, always, always put a fuse in the battery. But I'm not going to do that today. I ordered some uh, battery connectors that have not come yet. I can go to the store and buy one, I guess, but for today we're not going to. So this wire is already halfway done. I'm just going to use this as a jumper for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the cable we just made between plus and minus for my 24 volts. And then in the middle here, between the two batteries, is where I'm going to fuse it. It doesn't really matter where you fuse it. It's a serious fuse. You, could, you know, a lot of people put it on the negative. Some people put it on the positive. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to fuse in here because that's how long my jumper is for the fuse. And it came with these nice little ones that I'm going to just reuse for today so that I can have a full circuit. All right, I got this all wired up and ready to go. Uh, this is my battery lead. This is my uh, sortie, which I'm assuming is my uh, load. We'll test that here in a minute. And then I've got my AC wired in. I don't really like working with these terminals. They're really convenient for this type of application. Uh, they can just put it on the board, but uh, I use these tails. I got a bunch of these for, you know, a dollar or something. I think I got like 50 of them. Like uh, computers use these in data centers and stuff, so I just throw them away. They have this end on, uh, the, I think it's a C14 on one end and a C13, the female version on the other end. I just cut that off and because it uh, plugs into their power system. Anyway, I just use these for quick disconnect. So I'm going to power this guy up and uh, make sure he's outputting 27 volts and then we're going to hook him up to batteries and to a load and actually give him a whirl. Alright, so I'm over here in the garage uh, ready to work on this store or this uh, rig. You see my other video, uh, I tested this device which is a solar charging device uh, to be used as a UPS. It does not work. Um, but it does work as it is designed. It does not work to be used as UPS. It needs a solar panel type input, which is a much higher voltage. It probably work if you push 40 volts into it or 30 volts into it. It'll pull down correctly. But it does not work with a normal 
um, power supply. So I wired in uh, this guy. He's ready to go. I'm going to test him, plug it in, and do some voltage tests, figure out how this thing is hooked up, and uh, charge these batteries. All right, so I got all these uh, terminations done, and we're ready to try this thing out. Um, this does, I'm gonna get comments about this, I'm sure. This does look backwards, but it is not. This is uh, the shield, this is the pin on this particular connector. So this is not backwards, this is correct. And I want my pin to be positive, so it's not red and white. This is pin, and this is shield, and it's hooked up right. Anyway, let's plug this thing in and try it out. So, plug the power in here, my little quick disconnect. Uh, nothing smoking, that's usually a good sign. I'm going to put my El Cheapo multimeter here on AC 200 volts. And I should get... Oh, another one. This is really hard to do one-handed. Let's not short this out today. should have 110 volts here. I have 116. This is running off an inverter, so uh, I actually will not have a difference between neutral and ground should be zero or very close to it, but this is not a tight inverter, so it will not. Alright, now I'm putting on 200 volts DC, 200, because my 20 volt setting is too low. This should be putting out 27 volts. So let's test first the, uh, what is labeled battery here. Not the sortie. Alright, and 27.3, that will charge a battery. And then the sortie should be my load, if I'm estimating correctly. 27.3, alright. So that looks good. Uh, now I'm going to wire this up to a battery. I'm going to unplug it to do that, and wire it up, and then we'll be right back. I have the battery hooked up to the charger, the charger plugged in, that's all fantastic. I checked my battery voltage just a moment ago. It was 25 volts before I plugged it in. 25 point something. 25.8, 25.9. So that is good. It is charging. Uh, anything over 24 is good. If it was 24, it'd be too deeply discharged. Well, lower than 24, I guess. Uh, it'd be pretty deeply discharged if it was around 20, 21. But uh, 26, these are fully charged already. Uh, it's just charging. Uh, I should pull this up to 27 and some change. Alright, so these batteries are good. Now we're going to test the load when we unplug the power. This should still be putting out 25 volts. So I am not able to do this one-handed. I'm going to do this two-handed. And it does indeed work. So this is without it plugged into power. It has flipped over the sortie to the battery power. And it is now running 26. It's discharging the batteries. Once so I brought this setup back inside, we're hooked up to the batteries here. And this is my new charger. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but uh, it's making a slight clicking noise. Probably can't pick that up. Uh, but I did measure out on the output side here and uh, my sortie is the same voltage as my battery voltage, so I anticipate that this will work just fine. So we're going to plug in my actual device that I'm powering with this thing, and see if it blows up. It probably won't, but it's fun to say that. See if it blows into a ball of flames! In true anticlimactic fashion, everything is fine. The regulator in this is designed to take a voltage between, I don't know, like 19 volts and 50 some volts probably that will accept a 24 volt or 48 volt power supply as is clearly indicated on the back. It will focus 24 or 48 volt DC which is probably somewhere between, legitimately between 22 and 55. Uh, so 24 or 48 nominal. And as expected it lights up, it links up, we're passing traffic, yeah, it's not really doing anything, I'm trying to get an IP address from it, but there's nothing there. So this isn't configured. So that's exactly what I expected. 
So now we're running off a of wall power off this thing, and it's still making its little clicking noise, which I don't really love. The manual should say, clicking noise made on the sortie, but what manual? Um, anyway, so now it's running off battery power. Same thing. Uh, I don't have a way to meter this output. Uh, I anticipate it's probably using like 0.2 amps. Uh, but I don't have a good way to meter that, so I'm not going to. Everything looks fine. So I'm going to leave this plugged in, charge these batteries up all the way, and uh, program this so it actually does something. So this is a huge success. All right, one more thing. Um, the I didn't do any prices on any of this stuff, uh, so I'll just do that real quick, and I can put it in the description too. Uh, this cost me all of, I think, $15, plus like 2 or $3 shipping. It took me about six weeks to get it. Uh, these are 5 amp hour batteries. You can buy these pretty much anywhere. They're about $25 a piece or so. Um, but it doesn't really matter what size they are. 12 volts. I've probably got about $70 in this, maybe. Between the batteries and the you know, miscellaneous parts and stuff. Alright, well thanks for watching. And as always, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. That would help me a lot. Thanks.